Hi, I'm going to build this uh, Automoblox piece, which is the passenger section. There are three sections to the body of the Automoblox T9. And we're going to build this as the middle section that the passengers go into. So this is just giving you a quick view, but let's begin. I'm going to go ahead and start a new file. And we want it to be a standard part file, standard.ipt inventor part file, create. And we're going to start a new 2D sketch, and you can choose a work plane. Okay, you should have your dimension page of the passenger section with you so that you can refer to the correct dimensions. <clears throat> All right, to build this shape, I'm going to begin with either the front or the back. Uh, it is It looks rectangular-ish. I'm going to build a rectangle. And the overall dimensions on our page, okay, the width is 3.17, and the height is 1.53. So I just hit tab to move from the width to the height and hit enter. Okay, when I made that rectangle, just so you know, I clicked once, I pulled away, and just let go of my mouse. From there, I used my keyboard. I typed my width, I hit the tab key, I hit tab to go to the height, and then I typed in the height. Hit enter, and there you go. Okay, I'm going to right click to get rid of the rectangle tool and say OK. I'm done with that. And we notice that it's not actually a rectangle. When we look at the corners, they're not sharp square corners, they're rounded. And on the sheet, I can see that it, uh, those were filleted with a radius of 0.3. So up here, we have a fillet tool right next to rectangle. Um, there's also a tool underneath. Maybe yours doesn't say fillet, maybe you see a chamfer. So you can hit the little drop down and change back to a fillet. A fillet will round it. A chamfer will just knock off the edge using a straight line. So we'd like to round it. We're going to come down. We're going to choose the corner that we'd like to fill it. Okay. And we need to put in our dimensions, which were 3 tenths of an inch, 0.3. Hit enter. If I zoom in a little bit, you can see how that's rounded over. And I'd like to repeat that. So I'm going to choose the fillet tool. And I'm going to come choose the next corner. And it already has given me a preview there in green. Hit enter. It assumed I wanted the same dimension. And I do the rest of them. I'm done with that. I'm going to right click, say OK. Um, oh, this one didn't update, I see. I left click on it, double click, and change that to 0.3. There you go, they should all look the same. Okay, from here, we're going to extrude this. I can say finish sketch, and hit the home button to bring it back into view. Extrude, there's only one profile, and on my dimension sheet, I see that the overall depth of this part is 3.17. So we're gonna change our distance of the extrusion to 3.17. It's the same as the width of the object. So the depth and the width are the same. And there you go, you've created the overall shape. From here, we're going to use a subtractive method to cut away parts that we don't want. Um, I, I'll begin with the top, how about? We see that on the top, there is a hole cut here going down, and that's where the passenger are going to go in. So we're going to start a new sketch on this top face. I'm going to right click and say new sketch. Pay attention to the orientation that it just snapped to. So the front is to my left currently and my right side is at the bottom. If you'd like to rotate that, notice that the words have even rotated, you can choose this little arrow in your view cube and rotate it 90 degrees. So now the front is underneath me. This is more of our standard orthographic projection. Okay, and again, we're gonna use a two-point rectangle. I'm just gonna make a rectangle start. I'm not clicking now with my mouse. I'm just gonna leave my mouse alone and I'm gonna use my keyboard. And I look at my sheet and I see the width is 1.98. Um, and the height is 1.59. Hit enter, and then I'm going to right click to turn that tool off. Now this rectangle can move around. Oh, I actually have a, let me hit F8 to show my constraints. I have a constraint here that I'm going to delete. Delete the wrong one. I have a coincident constraint here I'd like to get rid of. Delete. Eh, let's just go back. Okay, it. I'm going to go back. When I made my rectangle, it's created a coincident constraint where it's attached to that edge, and I don't want that. So 
I'm going to go 1.98 again, and my height was 1.59. Okay, I want it to be free to float right now. There you go. Okay, so I can move it this way, and I can move it this way. So it's free to move around. Good. Okay, we do want to lock it in place, but that's where I'm going to look at my dimensions, and I'm going to see that um, I'm kind of looking up on the upper right area, upper right corner, and I see that um, this should be 0.595 inches from the right side. So I can use my dimension tool, and I can choose the right edge of this rectangle, and the right edge of my part, pull that up, and I can set that dimension now to be the correct dimension. And we want it to be 0.595. And now I'm also going to look similarly for a value to dimension this edge to this edge I see. So my dimension tool, I want to set this dimension here. And on the paper, that is 0.82. Okay. So I've got the rectangle where I want it, but I also would like to make it have these round corners, as I see in the picture. And straight above on the paper, I see a radius of 0.2. So we're going to use the fillet tool. I'm going to change the radius to 0.2, and we're going to come select these corners. And I'm done with that. I will right-click and... OK, it's off. All right, so we're done with that sketch. We're going to extrude cut that. So I'm going to choose Extrude. Choose this shape, profile. The default was thinking I want to use an additive method to add material, which I don't. I want to cut. So over here in the Extrude dialog box, I'm going to choose this icon, which is the cut. And I need to get the correct depth. Looking back on my sheet, I can see a dimension of 1.07 that that hole goes down say OK. And we're done with that. OK. Next I'll move to the front face right here and we'll add that piece. And the next of these are going to be very similar. So right click, new sketch, rectangle tool. OK, I really don't want to get a coincident constraint. There's a lot of little constraints. You know, to avoid that, you can even just kind of make it in space here. All right, let's get the dimensions off the sheet. The width is 2.4. The height of this one is 0.93, and then I could come grab my dimension tool and get those dimensions right. I'm going to turn that off. I'll drag and kind of generally get it into the right place, okay, and then dimension it to lock it in there. So I can see on my paper that this dimension right here is supposed to be 0.30. I'm going to go back and edit that. It's not asking me if I want to edit it right now. And let's add this dimension here. So we got the top to the top, and we'll do the right to the right. OK, I'm going to turn off the dimension tool so I can go back and edit. This one is supposed to be 0.3. And this one here on my paper I can see is supposed to be 0.39. And I can see that that's been curved as well. And my paper shows a radius of 0.2. So let's go use our fillet tool with a radius of 0.2 again, and select all these corners. Right click and say OK, finish sketch, and extrude, and choose that profile. We're going to extrude cut, and I need the correct distance to cut. On the paper I see that it's 0.57. I'm going to use my view cube, and I'm going to click the opposite corner on the top just to get it to spin around 180 degrees so I can see the back side. And I'm going to select that side, hit new sketch, and we'll repeat with the back extrusion. I'm just going to make a rectangle here. This one is supposed to be, uh, looks like 2.5 in width. In height that's supposed to be 1 inch, so that note the dimensions are different. I'm going to turn off the rectangle tool. I'm going to grab the corner so I can just move this generally into place. And then I'll dimension it to lock it in. All right. On the back, it's 0.27 from the top. And the right is 0.34. So let me just add dimensions that then I can edit. So this one was 0.27. 
This one here is 0.34. And again, the corners are rounded, so we have the fillet tool, and that's also a radius of 0.2. So choose fillet, radius is 0.2, and select these corners. Say finish sketch. We're going to extrude. The depth here is the same 0.57 that we used on the other side. It's guessing that maybe we want that same measurement, and it was correct this time. So, whoop, actually, I messed up, but that's probably good to see how to fix a mistake. So I did the extrusion. I could hit back and just undo it and redo it, or over here in the browser, I can see that extrusion 4 is that piece I just did. I'm happy with the sketch. It's the extrusion I want to fix. I'm going to right click on extrusion and say edit the feature. The sketch would be the rectangle that I made with those two round or those four rounded corners. I'm happy with that, but the feature I'd like to fix. I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to choose cut this time and we're going to change the direction to cut in and say okay. In this drop down where it says generic material, there should be a uh, wood choice, and we're looking for uh, birch. We're going to use wood birch for the finish. And let's go ahead and save our part right now before we get too far along. Okay, from right here, we've got two more things to do. If you look at the part, there is a groove that runs down the side that we need to add, and it's on both sides. And that uh, there is an, a leader line pointing to it, and it says see detail A on your plans. And over to the right side of your paper, you should see a, a detail A where it's been enlarged by a scale of 3 to 1 so that we can see and understand the groove. And it's really a little square piece. So we're going to add that. And then the last thing will be to add the logo, the T9 logo here on the side. Okay, to cut that groove, we're going to do uh, a profile on this face that will do an extrude cut throughout. Uh, the whole length. So let's choose this face, right click, and say new sketch. Okay, I'm going to zoom in on one side, and we're going to go ahead and make this rectangle. And looking at the paper, I can see that the dimensions of it are actually uh, a square, 0 0.06 by 0 0.06. I want this square to be attached to the side, so I want this coincident constraint that you can see right there. Um, Okay, this right here shows a coincident constraint that the point is going to be on the line. So I'm going to click right there, move my mouse, pull it away, I'm not clicking, then I'm typing on my keyboard the dimensions, 0 0.06, tab, 0 0.06, enter. I'm finished with the rectangle or square tool, right click and say OK. Now I'd like this to be dimensioned to have the correct distance down from the top. Um, you can confirm that it's where it needs to be, that it's stuck to the side by trying to grab it and pull it, and you can see it's only moving up and down. When we dimension it to the top, then it'll be stuck in place. So I'm going to dimension from the top to that edge, pull that out to the outside, and the detail shows me that it should be 3 tenths of an inch, 0.30. Right click to turn off the dimension tool, say OK. Now I could repeat this process over on the other side, or I'm going to show a slightly more advanced feature, and that is to um, use this geometry, this profile, and just mirror it over here. What I'm going to do is create a work axis or a line that would really be like a line of symmetry right down the middle, and then I'm going to mirror this part over. So if you'd like to watch and learn something a little more advanced, continue on. Or you could repeat what I just did, which is very simple here. Um, and so for in this case, maybe that would be the faster way to do it. However, um, this is a technique that in other cases would be probably faster and more powerful, depending on what you're doing. Okay. Um, when you slide your mouse along sections, generally you can find uh, the midpoint it highlights. But right now, this line that's uh, kind of highlighting in red, it's not in this sketch, it's in a different sketch. I'd like to project that geometry, that line or edge, onto the sheet that I'm drawing on right now. So there's a project geometry tool I'm going to click on. And I'm going to choose this edge and just select it. 
and that projects that line or edge onto the drawing sheet I'm on, and I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom. Okay, and then I'm just going to right-click and say okay. And now, uh, let's see, I'm going to grab a line. I should be able to find the midpoint. There you go, right there. Okay, as I'm moving along, I should be able to find a place where I get that green dot to appear. And you can see the, the constraint is a point to a point. So when I make this line, this point, the first endpoint, will be constrained to be in the midpoint. Okay, I'm going to pull this out and do the same thing on the bottom. And I'm going to look for the midpoint right there. I'm going to select that point, make the segment, right click, and say OK. Now, this line that I just created is really just a helpful line. I'm going to select it. And then, over here under Show Format, I'm going to change the line style from a solid line to a dash line because it's really a construction line that's just helping me build something. So just to denote that that's not really an edge of my part, but that I created that just as a helpful tool. Okay, next, I'm gonna take my geometry and I'm gonna mirror it across this line. I have a mirror tool right here, I'm gonna choose mirror. Now I need to select this uh, profile, this square. Uh, one way I guess I can do that too is I can click and hold and drag and just select those items right there. I'm going to pan over so I can see the line. And right now it's asking me to select the profile down in the uh, right corner or left corner down below. Uh, maybe you can't see that. I think it's being cut off, but it should say select geometry to mirror in the lower left corner. I next, I've already done that, I want to select the line to mirror across. I'm going to change this right here in the dialog box, and then I'm going to choose the line. And then I'm going to hit apply. And you can see that it's appeared over here. And click done. Okay, so that's my sketch. I'm going to hit finish sketch. And we're going to extrude. I'll go ahead and snap back to an almost orthographic view. Extrude. And I want to choose just that little square. And I want to come over to the other side and choose this little square. And then I want to change this to an extrude cut. And I want to change the distance. I want the distance to be, instead of distance, I can just say all. And it'll go all the way through. Hit OK. And I can zoom out. And you can see we've added that detail that's been cut through. Okay, so we've done all the extrusions. The last thing now is to just add the text on the side, the T9 text. So to add the decal on the side, we're going to use the emboss tool. And the emboss tool may not be showing in your ribbon right now. Um, these are features to create, right? This is your create area. And um, it kind of makes you think the way it's set up, at least for me, that this would be the drop down to see all the tools and that this is more of a unique, you know, just different types of sweeps when you see that drop down. But in fact, hitting that arrow right here brings down other options that are not necessarily related to the sweep. And so yeah, that's, you know, sometimes the same thing over here. So uh, just be careful. Do not be shy to click things and drop down and expand to see what's what's hiding around. So like that showed a decal, okay, and under here shows emboss. I want to emboss, and you can see that says creates a raised or recessed feature from a profile. Uh, let's see, new sketch, okay. Actually need to add the text, T9. I'm going to make T bigger. I'm going to bold them both. I'm going to change the font to Arial. Press A to get to the A's. Choose Arial. Hit OK. Finish sketch. 
to zoom in and emboss wants me to prick a profile I'm going to choose that and in the handout I believe does it tell us the depth if you look under the text and emboss section Uh, which is section three. Item two says use embossed features to create raised letters use a depth of 0 0.02. So we're going to make this 0 0.02 inches. Say OK. And so they're at, it's basically like a little mini extrusion. OK, to color that surface so that it's black or maybe a dark brown, I'm going to, in the browser, find the emboss. I'm going to right click. I'm going to say edit feature and this little box right here underneath where it showed depth I'm going to click on that and I can change the color and so there's a black and if you look at the real object it almost looks like maybe it's dark brown um, so you could look if you want and see if you can find a dark brown um, there's a dark brown dirt driftwood maybe right there There you go. <laughs> and now we've got the T9 and it's darkened. We're going to repeat that on the other side and this is done. So you can hit save. Make sure you've got your fi final document saved. And this is the passenger section underscore last name first initial. Make sure you save it where you want to save it. So navigate through your folders. This one I'm not really saving because I've already built the part. I'm just showing. But again, you know, make sure you go through and find your document folder and your My Inventor files and you get it exactly where you want it. Okay.